It is that time of the year again, and I am super excited to dive into the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge KringleCon 2021. Now, normally I've done these videos in the past, or I've tried to showcase some of the Holiday Hack Challenge in different YouTube videos, and I've never been able to actually finish recording everything because I had already gone through the KringleCon Holiday Hack Challenge and had finished it and submitted a report, but I wasn't filming along the way, and I was sort of backtracking to go and record everything and showcase it after the fact. Uh, this time, I don't want to do that do justice, uh, or whatever. I, I don't, I don't want to do it wrong. I, I want to try and capture everything. Uh, so, the idea is let's record and get the footage of me doing it for the first time, raw, genuine, going through it. Um, that way, hopefully, <laughs> we can showcase it all the way to the end, uh, and Hopefully, fingers crossed, hey, I can get this all edited and uploaded and maybe cut up the raw, dull moments of where I'm just kind of stuck at a wall trying to learn something new, etc. I don't know. Uh, we're, we're just going to leave the camera on and let it roll and record while I go through this thing for the very first time. So, without further ado, I guess let's dive into it. I'm super excited because I haven't tackled this yet before, but uh, let's go. So I, I am over here on my computer screen. I am at 2021.kringlecon.com. I am working in my Linux virtual machine right now because I have a feeling that I'm going to be doing some cool shady hacker stuff. So I figured, you know what? I should probably be in Ubuntu or something new. So, or at least something more worthwhile and, and usable than my Windows box. So let me try and zoom in here so we can make this all visible. And this is the game. If folks aren't familiar with the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge recently, you have been set up in a situation where you are a little avatar kind of bumping around a digital world and you can modify your character your NPC if you wanted to if you went into the settings I just clicked that gear icon over there it might even be the profile oh okay I guess they're gonna be doing some work in about an hour so that's kind of a bummer can I can I make that pop-up go away Okay, I just refreshed the page. Uh, yeah, if you click your avatar icon, then you can modify and, and set up however you'd like to look. But this is how I'm dancing around right now. It's just simply this avatar with a sand shirt on. So uh, you can move the arrow keys to move around or you can click by the mouse. Uh, but you'll go and talk to individual characters and now you can click to them to talk to them. So, welcome to the North Pole, Kringle Con, and the 2021 Sans Holiday Hack Challenge. I'm Jingle Ringford, one of Santa's elves. Santa asked me to come here and give you a short orientation to this festive event. Before you move forward through the gate, I'll ask you to accomplish a few simple tasks. First things first, here is your badge. It's that wrapped present in the middle of your avatar. Ooh, okay. So, I have this guy here. Can I click on that? Yeah. Okay. And this looks like it brought me to the same thing the settings page had. Yeah. Maybe it's just a quick button. Great, now you're official. Click on the badge of your avatar or this present. That's where you'll see your objectives, hints, and gathered items for the Holiday Hack Challenge. Let me full screen this before I forget. We've got handy links to the CrimCon talks and more there for you. Now click on that USB Wi-Fi adapter just in case you need it later. Um, oh, is there something indicating over here? Yeah, click on the Wi-Fi adapter and pick it up. There we go. Ooh, I have a new item, which is my Wi-Fi dongle. And now I can go back to talk to Jingle, who looks like he still has more for me. Fantastic. Okay, one last thing. Click on the Cranberry Pi terminal and follow the on-screen instructions. And now he has an ellipsis to indicate that he's done talking and will kind of repeat the same verbiage. But we want to click on this Cranberry Pi terminal icon that's displayed on the screen here. And ooh... Welcome to the first terminal challenge. This one is intentionally simple. All you need to do is click in the upper pane of this terminal, okay, done, and type answer, and then press enter. Answer. Done. <laughs> wow. Thrilling work. Uh, okay, now we've uh, finished some objectives. And Jingle says, great, your orientation is now complete. You can now enter through the gate now. Have fun. And that's about it. So this is kind of the landing spot here. Uh, I see over on the left-hand side, it tells me, ooh, in my inventory, when I have something new, that's new. They, they didn't have that previously. My Wi-Fi dongle has a command line interface. Whoa, this is all new. 
Attention all elves. In Santa's workshop, the wireless division, we've been busy adding new cranberry pie features. We're proud to present an experimental version of the cranberry pie, now with Wi-Fi support. This beta version of the Cranberry Pi has Wi-Fi hardware and software support using the Linux wireless tools package. This means that you can use the IWList command to search for Wi-Fi networks and connect to them with IWConfig. You can read the manual or the man pages to learn more about those commands, man IW list and man IW config. I'm afraid there aren't a lot of Wi-Fi networks in the North Pole just yet, but if you keep scanning, maybe you'll find something interesting. Ooh, okay. So I want to check with IW list. Uh, and I would need to use the manual page to actually get an under idea of how to use this. I'm just kind of exploring right now, forgive me. IWList get more detailed wireless information from a wireless interface. Okay, so scan or scanning will give you the list of access points and ad hoc cells and range and potentially information about them. Okay, could I just kind of run that? I hit Q on my keyboard exit out of the man page and there's nothing nearby at the moment and that's okay because I don't think we need to dive into that right now but I do want to see what this thing is here okay here is a <laughs> hey you've completed the open the gate challenge these are my objectives and tasks that have been complete do I want to tweet this yeah sure absolutely nice <laughs> all right let's get back to it now we can walk through the gates and move into this new area. Whoa, that's a lot of new objectives. Where am I? <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck in between distilled and aged. I was morphed into his body. That's weird. Ooh. Okay, so I got a little bit of the music going. I've made it so hopefully you can't hear it. I'm not listening on that interface within OBS, but uh, let me look at all of the new objectives. Oh, and I also have a map, sort of, for the story. Listen, children, to a story that was written in the cold about a Kringle and his castle-hosting hackers, meek and bold. Then from somewhere came another, built his tower tall and proud. Surely he, our frosty villain, hides intention, excuse me, hides intentions neath a shroud. That's the story tab up there. So this objectives must be the checkbox. Okay, so that we're moving through. Oh, and there are sub objectives now under one of them. I don't wanna uh, spoil anything for myself just yet, but here are our objective names. Where in the world is Caramel Santiago? Santiago? <laughs> Thro Frost Tower's entrance, slot machine investigation, strange USB device, shell code primary printer exploitation, and Splunk. Splunk always makes a return, now hiring, Customer complaint analysis of Froster. Okay, so there's a lot in here. What's going on with number two? We need to help Tangle Colbox find a wayward elf in Santa's courtyard. Talk to Piney Sappington nearby for hints. All right, well, Santa's here, along with all these other users, so let's see what Santa has to say. Ho, 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 I'm Santa Claus. Welcome to North Pole and KringleCon 4. No, 3. No, 4. I don't know Roman numerals. Holy cow. What is it? What did that say? It was calling birds? Calling blues? I'd like to introduce you to the four birds here, each of whom is calling. Gotcha. Did you guys see that guy just freaking zip across the map? <laughs> We're so glad to have you here. Oh, what's that? You've heard another conference up at the North Pole? Well, I'm afraid you'll have to ask Jack Frost about that. Mm. To be honest, I'm not quite sure what his intentions are, but I'm keeping an eye out. Anyway, enjoy your time with the Sands Hold I Hack Challenge and KringleCon. All right. So let's talk to these birds calling doves uh, yeah calling birds hey you that's yeller <laughs> welcome museon 23 thanks for being in the video seller says your car's warranty is about to expire <laughs> that's a that's a genuinely good joke quacker says quack dealer says anti up all right so now we gotta go find tangle coal box look here's the north pole Oh, whoa, Jack Frost was over there. Did you see him? Right in the corner? What you got for me, Jack? Yo, what's the word on the streak, buddy? Home dog. Welcome to the North Pole, the frostiest place on Earth. Trademark. <laughs> Sponsor. Last year, Santa somehow foiled my plan. How were you out of jail, dude? So this year, I decided to beat Santa's own game. I'm going to take over the holiday season from the old man and dominate it myself. 
I built Frost Tower, the epicenter of frostiness of the North Pole. Believe me, it is the biggest North Pole Tower the world has ever seen. Quite frankly, our Frostfest conference is going to be the greatest con in the history of cons. As for Frostfest, we honor all badges for entry, including those from the lame conference next door. Uh-oh. Oh, and make sure you visit the gift shop and buy some swag on your way out. Everyone says it's the best swag you'll ever find. People love our swag. Okay, and that is about it. I don't know if you can hear the ambulance is just screaming by. <laughs> trying to record here, guys. <laughs> All right. So Jack Frost is still frosty. Uh, that's okay. There's so much in this. This North Pole like plaza is, is massive. Oh, there are a lot of people here. How come they have uh, yellow badges? I want a yellow badge. Or is mine different because, like, I attended some of the previous ones? I know they did that last time. Oh, and there is a... There is... Oh, oh, sorry. I want to I wanna look at this um, Cranberry Pie Terminal. What is this? What is it? Okay, I couldn't see the title, but whatever. Howdy, howdy! Mind helping me with this homework... Or challenge? <laughs> it's homework. Someone ran Nmap Tech OG on a big network and produced this big scan.gn map file. Uh, so the tech capital G for the output format in Nmap is for greppable formats. That way you could kind of very easily be able to grep like the Linux command line through each and every one of the lines or responses in that. So I'm assuming we're going to do some grep work in this challenge. The quiz me program has the questions and hints and incidentally has nothing to do with an elf university assignment. I gotcha. <laughs> Answer all the questions in the quiz me executable. What port does 3476122 have? What port does 3477207226 have open? How many hosts appear up in the scan? How many hosts have a web port open? Let's just consider ports 80, 443, and 8080. Roger that. How many hosts with the status up have no detected open TCP ports? Uh, wait. Oh, 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 so how many didn't have a result? What's the greatest number of TCP ports any one host has open? So let me run LS to see what we have here. And it is, of course, just, oh, we don't have file. Never mind. Can I even cat this out or I have to use grep over and over again. Oop, yep, a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, where do they store that front message? Is that the message of the day? Yeah, it is. Okay, so a cat, et cetera, or Etsy directory, MOTD for message of the day. That is the text or file that's displayed as you log in to a system. Um, whenever you're in the command line, you SSH in that sort of idea. So quiz me is the actual... Um, program that I need to run to be able to answer these questions. So if I wanted to answer them and actually had the answers, oh yeah, I, I still need the answers. Uh, I'm going to control C out of that. But let me take notes here. I'm going to move this into a, another window off to the side. And then I'm going to open Sublime Text. So I can just kind of take notes of this super quick. So I have this... I'm going to cat this out, even though everyone yells at me for doing that grep backwards. I know I'm kind of insane for doing that. You could grep first as your command and then supply a pattern, but I tend to like catting it out and then piping it to grep, even though I know it's worse, whatever, you evangelists and purists. So we need to grep for 3476122. Let's grep for that. Um, so it has only one port open supposedly so but that answer is one it is up and the ports open unless is it is it not showing me things nope it is showing me everything so now let's look for this next one this next ip address grep to just look for a line with contents on that page okay so we have 8080 yep so that's another one. Oh, it's asking for what port, as in the number, not not how many. I was immediately going to get things wrong. <laughs> uh, and the other one is 8080. Okay. How many ports have a web port open? All right. So let's grep 
with um, potential options. So let's use, I think, capital E for extended regular expressions and look for 80 or 443 or 8080. Does that work? Nope. Um, or do you need that within single quotes because it is kind of a string? Yep, okay, there's plenty there. Um, and these are all going to be unique hosts and they all have either 80 or 8080 open. So this looks like all the results that I want. This looks like the output that I need, but I want to actually get the number of those. So let me pipe that into word count or WC tac L to get the number of lines count. And that is quite a lot. One, five, three, zero, excuse me, 15035. I hope that's the right answer. And what was the next question? How many ports of the status up have no detected open ports? Uh oh. Okay, so the way that we could do this potentially is to grep for the word up, and that'll show us each of the lines that are up, but the next line for how many ports are following it, uh, it is the line that's after it. So you can still get the line after if we specify A1 to get after the line that we match, the pattern that we found, and then one line following it. So that should give me all of these, but now I need to be able to detect uh, things that don't have any ports. Is there any example where it says none detected or closed a thousand? Are there any examples that I could find super quick? Maybe if I grep for the word detected? Because um, the ignored state for a thousand. Wait, let's let's grep for the word detected. Nope. Let's grep for closed. Now let's grep for closed um, being a thousand and the, the number of ports inside of the parentheses. That didn't return anything. Uh, crap. Okay, what is a response of thing that doesn't have anything actually open? Do I want to do a grep tact V for the word open? So V to invert it. Well, then I'm just returning only the things <laughs> that say up. So that's not all that helpful. Um, yeah, and there are a lot of these. So I'm not finding any entry or occurrence that doesn't actually display that. Oh, goodness. What, what, what would it look like without it? Let's let's go back to just the big long list and then let's pipe it to less. Can I see less? Yep. Okay, so now I'm scrolling through each and every line and then it will ignore the states that are closed, filtered. So the state could be either closed or filtered. But how, what is that question asking? Because if it, if it doesn't have any ports respond, will Nmap even display it? Are there any lines that are status up and then no ports following it? Like, I wanna see an example. Oh, there is one, there is. Ooh, how do I detect that? How could I see that? I'm trying to think, like just using grep, right? Maybe like the next line following it would be host like it would start with the word host. Mm. But then I would be getting both lines, would I not? What could I do? Could I use, so status up is the very, very last thing in a line, but just following it will be a new line Mm, it won't let me see the new line with extended regular. Can I use Perl lug lines like tat capital P? No, that's frustrating. How am I gonna find that? What is the message of the day asking for? How many hosts with the status up have no detected open TCP ports? Uh, 
uh, they're all I know I know it was like a two two three that I saw that on or two three three right so if I less that one more time I'm gonna search for that two two three or two three three <laughs> crap it could have been any of these where I found that up and up just after it. So that's not super helpful. Maybe I should be grepping for things that don't have ports listed, but no, because even then it'll display ones. Hmm. I am frustrated that I'm not figuring this out right now. No, 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 there, there's their example, 243 and 249. So 243 is up and has no ports listed underneath. 249 does while it's still up. And there's no difference in how these lines look. So how could I easily determine that? Hmm. Part of me thinks I feel like I'm just going to have to like rage quit and move on. You know what? I could do some actual research. <laughs> Greppable and map format hosts with no ports open. So here they're researching that. Um, so status, yep. But all of them, is there anything that's not status up? Was it, was there anything that's actually let's look for status. Now all of these are going to be up. Blah. Because it shows the both lines twice, which is so frustrating. Mm, awesome end map grep. Count number of open ports. Cool. Print the top 10 ports. Cool. This is actually a super good resource for this challenge. This little task here. Print the top 10 ports. Uh, I don't need that. I need to know the ports that don't have any. Oh, maybe I could use this. Do I have egrep and cut? Could I use this? Okay, pasted that all in on oh, my mmap file. I need to actually specify. So I'm going to actually just set that variable. You can see they're using a dollar sign for nmap variable there. I'm going to set that to the name of this, which is big scan gnmap. And let's run that same command. And now it may very well hopefully actually cut through all these. I don't know. It, I can't tell if it's doing this or not. <laughs> Maybe it's just because it's so big, it's so slow, or I've got no output. I'll let that run and we'll find out. But egrep, cut, sed, and awk, and printf and sort, those are totally normal bash variable, bash commands to run. So I feel like that'd be fine. Unless, oh, I named the stupid variable wrong. Oh my goodness. You guys should have told me. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot there. Okay, so I want to grep for um, ports open zero. Excuse me. Oh, it won't display them. No. No. Yeah, it's starting at one. Dang it. That 
that's not really all that helpful. What is this line gonna end up doing though? So we grep for lines that have status up. Oh, egrep will actually let us use that though. Egrep will let us look for lines that start with status up. And we replace ignored. And then we filter all these and split them. And then it counts all of those in descending order. Ascending order. Okay. What is that egrep command going to return for us right away? I feel like I'm super overcomplicating this. And I probably am. So you guys can yell at me. So I want to egrep for things that actually do have a status up. So now I return all of that. And I want to look for the new line character is following that. Well, let me see that. No. How can I specify that? How can I specify a new line? <laughs> we could like pull this file out and then they're just like naturally without grep. But I feel like I should know how to do this. They look for banner grabbing showing the ports for each of them. Uh, crap. How is this question stumping me so much? I feel like I don't even want to release this video. <laughs> Yeah, man. So how many, how many lines is this? Let's see. Oh, 51,000. That's not bad. We could copy and paste that out, couldn't we? <laughs> Check out bigscan.gn map. Seriously, how the heck am I supposed to figure this out on the second line? Because I, I want to take each set as a thing with just grep. What is the greatest number of TCP ports any host has one open? Oh, actually, we saw that with our previous egrep, like that second line. Uh, wait, on the bottom, it's 12, right? So that's the, that's the other question. The final question is 12. But the final one, how many hosts with status up have no detected open TCP ports? Hmm. Trying to think if I loop through like each line to determine if ports was in there and then like contextually no. Would that work? So if I grep for status up. Maybe this is going to turn into some like disgusting bash one liner. Do I have nano? <laughs> I do. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Let's, let's, let's freaking go. Uh, nano, uh, toy dot sh spin bash. And then let's cat big n map or big scan dot gn map. Yeah. Mark it as executable to make sure it'll actually run oh gosh toy didn't tab complete there are we okay so that works so let's grep for status up yeah and then when we run that we receive all the status ups and then we can loop through each of these and let's do a while read line Let's do a do and then a done, and let's just echo the line variable. So now we're looping through each of them and getting a little bit of a better context as to which each of these things are. So now I wanna cut 
and get the second field because that is in fact the IP address. So I'll set that with some command substitution. First, let's get all right, our delimiter with a space and then the second field, F2. That should carve out strictly the IP address, which it does, perfect. Now, we can say IP will equal that. Now we want to cat the big file again. Oh God, so we can look through and check for the IP address and look for ports, if they're in included or not. So this way we'll see each port. Oh, no. What did I, did I forget something? What? Why? Oh, oh, I should be grepping for the IP address. Like that. Okay, so now we're getting each port, naturally, but we have actual logic to be able to test if the previous thing succeeded or failed. Uh, I wanna know the actual, did, did you find a value um, when you ran grep or not? So if you succeeded, like if your error code, and that's what that dollar sign question mark is, that's the error code. If that's equal to zero, then we know you succeeded and you did find something. If not, then you didn't find a host that had ports open, in which case you just found ports. Uh, so let's run that, but also um, not show any of that output. So let's redirect that to dev null and Actually, before I start displaying things, let's try and echo out the risk, like error and exit code of that previous command, grep. So we should be able to see zero. Oh, there were some with a one. So the one with a one, one with the zero is when it successfully found ports. Ones that didn't should be not equal to zero, as in the grep did not succeed and we could not find open ports, then I want to echo out that host that we found. So let's try and run that. And now this will take a bit of time, but we will actually be able to determine what IP addresses don't have ports open. Um, right now it looks like five, six, okay, seven, eight. <laughs> I probably should have like teed this to a log file or run a better word count, tech L. If anything, we can kind of copy and paste this, but this is slow and probably not a good move. So let's let's actually tee that to um, iplog.txt. And I'm gonna let that run while I go research. I'll pause the recording and, and let me go research if there was a better way to determine that because I felt like I had to contextually know which line was open or not if I couldn't grep with a new line character. Maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need to grep for new line character. Their grep patterns are matched against individual lines. So there's no way to do that. You could use PCRE grep. Do I have PCRE grep? I guess I don't know. And now I, I can't check because that's running. <laughs> But TAC M, capital M, allows it to match across multiple lines. So you can search for new lines just like that. Oh, but you could find empty lines. That's not helpful. Hmm. Wait. Is that a thing? Zop? Z, grep tag Z will allow it to do that? I gotta try that. After this thing finishes. <laughs> Let me take a break. Uh, I'll stop recording and we'll see when this is done. Okay, I think this has to be close because we're just about at the dot two five five. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> I didn't realize we had another octet shift for the second octet there. Dang it. 
Okay. If this doesn't stop on the second octet shift, I'm probably going to stop it. And we'll just try something else. Maybe. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe I'll just open another window. Can I go to can I go to a, a second KringleCon page? Will it yell at me if I do that? Nope. That's still cruising. Oh, but it did log me out. But it's still up because of the iframe thingy. I think it's in a Docker container when it runs these. So if I open another one, will it kill that? Fingers crossed, no. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so upset. All right, well, now I can just kill the old tab and we'll go back to this one, I guess. Okay, so hey, do we actually have PCR grip? Was that what it was called? Now I freaking killed my Stack Overflow page. This is just bad news bears all around. Let's go back to KringleCon. So Z could do it, it said. And yeah, PCRE grep, but I don't have it. So grep tech Z. status up in our big scan dot gn map how did it status colon up why 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 did that not work why did it return the ports ones oh does he do the multi-line thing Uh, maybe I need the OP, ZOP. Okay. So that is working. It's very confusing because it's putting it all on the other lines, but that gives us a number, which would have taken forever for our thing to work. Let me save that, and realistically, I should have probably saved each of these as I was working through them. Um, but let's try the quiz me. So I found 62078. Correct. Oh, the, it gives you the solutions. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> that way I don't have to do all that work again. Um, you have five challenges left. Okay, so now quiz me, I need to, oh, enter it and rerun it every time. 8080, great. Oh, so I need to use quiz me every time. How many ones were up? So 15035. Ooh, did I get that wrong? What, what was that one asking? Message of the day. How many hosts appear up in the scan? So if I grep for status colon up in big scan dot gn map, how many did you have? Oh, sorry, needed a space between those. Two six zero five that's significantly more. Oh no. Oh no. That's the answer that I would have had for the bottom one. So I think something might have been wrong. Yeah. So grep up big scan worked. But now that tells me that what I had used for the zop thing didn't work. Because it's the exact same answer. Unless it starts with it. Oh, goodness. Yeah, Santa, they're going to be updating. So that's kind of frustrating.
I'm curious what their solution to this is. Can I figure it out in the next 15 minutes? Let's find out. How many hosts have a web port open? Wait. Oh. Was that, that was the answer that I needed previously, wasn't it? This 1503 one? What? So grep tech o I want to look for lines to include either eighty or two two or four four three or eighty eighty. Right. What is wrong with that? That's an or. Does it need like at least one or only one? That works. Oh, the very, very top line is in the way. That's so frustrating. So it's the results minus one. Because <laughs> it, 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 it captures So that's what we need. Let's paste that in. Excuse me. What? All right, let's take a look at these hints, man. We're here to learn. You can give grep a regular expression, regex, with the tack E option. I did that. So if we grep Oh, is it finding the host just as well? That's probably messing it up. It's probably finding some some IP address that has a dot eighty octet and then no other. Oh gosh. So here, let's cat big scan. Grep it like that, but first before we do that, let's grep it for the ports. So we're looking strictly at the ports. Um unless uh ports colon. and then anything following that. So how many does that give us? That way it's not looking at the IP address, 14372. That is what we needed. Let's try that one. Correct. Okay. Ooh, that's super smart. It was probably finding, so the, the comment here is if you want to be more correct, you could use something like uh, spaces, like a, a, a space character and choose those to make sure you don't grab ports like 5,080 5, or 50,080, but there weren't any in this file. So that that's a, that's a help. Now, if I run quiz me, how many hosts have a, no detected open TCP ports. Let's check the hint on that one. How might you count how many hosts are up? Oh, you're saying to subtract the ones that I have a port from? So that's a smarter move. If we grep for status up, how many we have here? That's that two six this guy now 
and then we subtract all the lines that actually have a ports listing. That way we could very easily determine how many it might not have. But our, our Dumbo Bash script would have found it eventually. <laughs> so do I a Python? I do. That's kind of surprising. Let's, I was just using this for quick math. You could very well use the calculator application. But, oh, I've opened up the developer console, and I really didn't want to do that. Paste that in there. 402 is what we needed. I wonder if they explain, hey, we did this in two parts, or if they had some other magic. Please be the answer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they literally subtracted it. That's, that's it. That's nice. Cool. All right. Before the maintenance goes on, how it's the greatest number of TCP ports any T one host has open. We did find 12 from the previous commands work. And yeah, they used some grep magic in there. That's awesome. We've done it. And I'm going to steal those solutions. <laughs> what a ride. That took significantly more time than it should have. Um, but if this thing is going to go under maintenance, um, I think that that is a fine time to stop this recording here. And we could... Oh, sorry, I grabbed the wrong submission there. And we can tune out of this video and then go do this again in another video. Uh, I think it's a fine time and a place to stop. So. This is like the worst organized solution at all. <laughs> and now we don't need a minus one because it gets that. I think we got it. I think we're done. That took way too long, and I don't even know if I want to upload this. It's so gosh darn embarrassing. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. We're going to have some fun with the Sands Hall to Hack Challenge and bump around until we figure stuff out because we're going through this live, raw, genuine. Going to make all these mistakes. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.